Hi, my name's Alison Tafe and I'm the director of the Institute of Culinary Excellence, better known as ICE. We are a cooking school in Brisbane and we've just recently opened our doors to international students from all over the globe. We have a lot of students at ICE and they're um, usually apprentice chefs working in some of the best restaurants in town, but you guys at Student One Accommodation, you got a surprise today. We're going to do a cooking class with you and I'm really hoping that you guys are going to cook along with me. So I'm not going to go too quickly, which I tend to do because I get really excited about food. I'm going to show you this amazing risotto. It's chicken, bacon and mushroom with a little bit of spinach and it's going to be served with a dressed rocket salad. Now, when you're studying, it's really important that you get great nutritious food inside of you so that you can get a little bit more energy, a little bit more focus. It helps with the physical aspects and the mental aspects and also it's delicious. So. I know you guys are probably suffering with the, the pandemic at the moment, you might be a little bit housebound, but if you're with friends that are in your units and your apartments, you can make this dish and you can all sit around, have a nice glass of wine and enjoy this beautiful dish. I made this, this risotto the first time ever when I worked for Jamie Oliver in 15 in Melbourne, one of those project restaurants. And his godfather, Gennaro, came over from England to Melbourne, showed me how to make a risotto. He didn't just come for me, he came over for lots of things, but he showed me how to make a, a champagne and strawberry risotto. Who would have thought? It was absolutely delicious. So hopefully by now you've all got your recipes. I sent those through earlier, so you'll be able to cook along with me. And if not, hopefully you can play this back at a later date and you can cook this along step by step. Pause me if I go too quick, I won't take offence. You can then rewind me, fast forward me if I get boring, and ultimately you can produce yourself this beautiful risotto, which I'm hoping you're gonna enjoy as much as I enjoy showing you. So let's get started, shall we? The first part of this recipe requires a pan, not normally a frying pan. I tend to use like between a saucepan and a frying pan. In a French classic cuisine, we call it a sauteuse, so like a, a half pan. This is a really good non-stick pan. It is kind of like a frying pan with deeper sides. And the reason I'm going to use this is so that I can show you the risotto while it's cooking. Otherwise, it's really hard to, to look down into the pan. So, yeah, some chefs use a saucepan, but today we're going to use, use non-stick. It's going to help with the washing up. And whoever does the cooking doesn't do the cleaning, right? It's like that in our house too. So, let's get started. The pan, I've got an induction cooktop. You might be using gas or you might even be using electricity. I'm not sure. I would imagine inside those apartments it's probably induction or electricity. So keep your pan down nice and low, and you're gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the bottom of the pan, okay? So a good, generous amount of olive oil. You have a recipe. For the first time, I suggest you follow the recipe. I kind of don't, sorry about that, but I will definitely try my best to keep within the perimeters of the recipe, I promise. So heat the oil up first. We're gonna put a little bit of butter in that. I'll say a little bit, it's actually quite a lot, but we won't talk about the um, fat content. Don't look at that, because it's, it's delicious. Um, the reason for the oil first is so that the butter doesn't burn. You need the butter for the flavour and colour, but if you put the butter straight into a hot pan, it's going to really burn. The smoke's going to go off, your student one accommodation alarm bells are going to go off, the whole building's going to be evacuated and you're going to be in trouble. So let's just keep the pan gentle, right, for everybody's sanity. All right, so I'm going to pop this up a little bit higher now. Can I just say you need to be in control of the pan don't let the pan be in control of you. In other words, always be able to turn the pan down slightly. Don't be frightened of taking the pan off if it's too quick. Don't just turn it down and expect it to happen because you're gonna burn this. All right, so gentle, gentle, all right? So, I'm not sure what you're all studying. I'm sure it's a variety of amazing things that you're studying here in Brisbane. We have cookery on our, I guess that's our big deal. We're a cooking school, so we teach chefs of tomorrow and cooking skills. So, I imagine you're here for all sorts of subjects and I really hope you're enjoying your studies despite being locked in doors a little bit at the moment. So uh, welcome, I should say, to Brisbane first. I should have said that, right? Okay, in this pan, once the butter has melted and it's not burning, it's not coloured, it's nice and golden, we're going to add some finely chopped onions. Now, I don't want to show you all these individual skills because it's going to take too long. If you want to learn how to chop an onion, obviously you're going to come to my school, obviously. Secondly, you can get online on YouTube. We have our own YouTube channel and we have all of these things like how to chop an onion, how to crush garlic, how to chop parsley. 
we're going to let you have that link and you are going to be able to go on and see these classes for free and you'll be able to see how I've chopped that beautiful onion. All right? I actually didn't chop it. My apprentice chopped that for me, but you're going to chop it yourself. Make sure it's really fine. That is going into our pan and we're gently going to cook the onion. Now, we call this sweating. If you've been in Brisbane in summer, you know what sweating's all about, right? This is different kinds of sweating. This means to cook gently, like a fry, but without colour, okay? And that's really, really important. You don't want colour in this risotto, guys, because the risotto is a white kind of like stew. So imagine if you burn the onions. It's going to look terrible, isn't it? Not only will it taste bitter, it's going to look bad in this stew. So you're going to keep this nice and gentle, drop the temperature, and let, as I said, don't let the pan control you. You're in charge, right? You're the chef. Chef means chief. So when you're making this risotto, you are in charge in the kitchen, all right? <laughs> so we're going to cook this out a little bit until it's just starting to be translucent. In other words, that word probably, yeah, if you, English is a second language, I probably should have just said slightly clear, slightly see-through, or soft, pinched with your fingers, or taste. In other words, it's soft and sweet, not raw and harsh. So nice gentle heat, not too much happening. And you can see I'm keeping that onion nice and golden brown and not too coloured. All right, next step, follow along with your recipes. <clears throat> I'm going to use bacon. And I'm also going to use some chicken thigh. You can use chicken breast, but it's more expensive for a start. Just put that out there if you're on a student budget. And also, the breast can get quite dry, so thigh is really good. So you're going to get skinless, boneless chicken thigh, and you're going to chop it into nice pieces, around about one to two centimetre pieces, like so, all right? And when you chop it on the ball, make sure you give that board a really good scrub down, guys, because you don't want any contamination from anything raw. So chop that in advance, pop it in a container, give that board a really good scrub. All right, that's going to go in with our onions, which are now really nice and soft and a little bit see-through. They look great and they smell, they smell beautiful. It's buttery, it's, oh, it's, it's delicious. All right, that chicken's gonna go in, okay? And I might increase the temperature now because I've got a protein in there. So it's gonna take away some of that heat. So hopefully, if you're following along from home, you've had the onions cooking a little bit, not too much smoke, no student alarms going off or anything like that. Then you're gonna add your chicken and we're gonna cook this together, all right? So chicken, give it a little head start. You can see just a nice little colour there. Now, what we're looking at here is for the chicken to be white all the way around. In other words, it's sealed, it's set its shape, and it's no longer raw. But it's not cooked inside. Just remember, give this a little bit of extra flavour. Now, you can, if you can afford it, get some pancetta or some prosciutto or some streaky bacon or some speck, whatever you want to put in there for extra flavour, go for your life. Bacon, beautiful. Now, if you don't eat bacon or you're trying to avoid pork, just keep this one with chicken, okay? It's not necessary. You could probably get that smokiness out of a bit of smoked paprika in there instead. All right, so we're gonna get that just going nicely. So far then, you've got that pan, and hopefully if you're cooking along with me, you should by now have onions, chicken, and bacon in this pan, okay? It's gentle. All right. I want to do this in real time with you guys because I don't want you to um, see me doing it really fast without too much detail. I want to go slow so that you can catch up with me, all right? And right now, if you're not, pause the video, which has been filmed in advance, and then you can catch up, all right? The last thing I want to do is go too quickly and you don't get this because this is for you, all right? This is to cook, entertain your housemates and your friends and student one accommodation and say, hey, come over to dinner, I'm cooking tonight. All right, you can see the chicken now is, is slightly firm, which means it's been sealed. It's not cooked all the way through, so don't eat it just yet. Just wait. Just going to drop down that little temperature a little bit. Again, you can hear the pans a little quick, and you can see, you can hear it, you can see it, so drop the temperature. All right, just while I'm allowing that to cook out, take my spoon out of there a little bit. All right, I'm going to crush garlic, and I am going to show you this, okay? So I'm going to take off the top and tail of the garlic, Rid of that. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that garlic in half. This is the world's biggest garlic clove, by the way. Look at the size of it. I said I wanted one. I said I wanted three garlic cloves for this recipe, and I got one ginormous one. But anyway, it's all good. We're going to peel the garlic, and what you can do if you want to, like us chefs, is you can use the back of a knife, or rather the centre of a knife, with your hand, smash and peel. Oh, smash, peel is fantastic, really quick, but take off the hard bit at the bottom first, otherwise you might cut yourself. So what we'll do is just clear the rest of that little peel away there, and we're just going to chop the garlic, or if you've got on those little garlic crushers at home, go, go for your life and just crush the garlic into there. We're not judging you on your knife skills just yet, all right? Make it easy for yourself. And if you really, really want to, you can buy some processed garlic. Oh, I didn't really say that, did I? Because students at ICE wouldn't be allowed to do that. But you know what? You guys aren't chefs, so whatever's easiest for you. Go and grab some garlic and uh, just try to buy a uh, garlic um, that is a garlic paste and not like a fabricated, made-up sort of garlic. Make sure it's nice, you know? It's not just a, a processed one in a tube like toothpaste. Make sure it's got some little bit of a, a nice flavour to it if you can. All right, so that garlic now is going in with the chicken and the bacon and the onions, and we're also going to add some chilli flakes now. Now, I'm not making this like an Asian risotto. The chilli is used in northern Italian dishes to add a little bit of kick, a little bit of bite, just to intensify the flavours of everything else. So this is not like a chilli for Thai or Malaysian cuisine. It's certainly not like an Indian chilli where it's going to be red hot. It's a tiny little bit of chilli flake. So by using the chilli flake, you get this lovely, uh, almost like an earthy, smoky sort of taste, but you get a little bit of bite. Some uh, Italians I know use a spicy sausage for this. and That would then give you that same spiciness. So just hold back a little bit. If you don't like chilli and you don't want to use it, I don't mind. It's up to you. This is your dinner, right? You choose what goes in it. Okay, let's pop that over here. And so now we've got our chicken, our bacon, and our onions, garlic. It's really starting to smell delicious by now. This has all gone up through the vents of Student One accommodation. Everybody's smelling it and they're like, what's going on in Unit 22? What's going on over there? It's like a party, and you're going to have people queuing up if they can smell this beautiful smell coming through. All right, so we're going to add some mushrooms. So this is a chicken, bacon, and mushroom risotto. I've got some little baby button mushrooms here. Now, you can turn this into an amazing vegetarian dish, obviously not with the bacon and the chicken, but you can make it with a variety of mushrooms, like enoki mushroom, Swiss browns, uh, shiitake mushrooms, wild flat mushrooms, whatever you want to do, this would be the time now that you would not have the chicken in there or the bacon, but you put a load of like different mushrooms in there and maybe some fennel and maybe some like asparagus. You can use the bases of the asparagus, the little slices, and use the tips at the end. Maybe you want to put in some other veg, but harder veg like maybe a sweet potato or a pumpkin or something like that because you want to make sure that it doesn't just cook a green vegetable from like, for like 20 minutes. It's going to be horrid. So think about something that's not going to change its colour, that's just going to add brightness and texture to this. So we've got little diced mushrooms. So all I've done is just, we tend to teach that with mushrooms you don't wash them. You kind of just like brush them over. You don't put them in water because they're like 95% water anyway. What we did was just cut these into quarters like this. Or, no, actually it's not quarters at all, is it? My maths is terrible. It's actually pieces, so let's just say pieces, shall we? All right, so we're going to pop those into here now. And I've got some which I cut up earlier going in. All right. Now, you've got a recipe that I did for you that serves four people. If it's only you and one other mate, you're going to half everything, all right? So half the rice and half the liquid. But just a small little free tip on the side is that whatever rice you add, whether it's a cup of rice, half a cup of rice, two cups of rice, whatever you do, you triple the amount of liquid that goes into this. So kind of don't need a recipe. You can be a bit freelance, but I suggest that you learn this recipe first and then you start to do it freelance. So follow along first and then you start to get a little bit more excited and you think, oh, I might be able to put something else in there or I might put this in or I might have something that's left from yesterday that I want to use up, like a nice bit of salami or a nice bit of sausage or something, you know. You can even put seafood in here, some nice prawns or whatever you've got. I won't say whatever you've got lurking in your fridges because you guys are students, right? That would be really bad. 
because I would imagine there's quite a lot lurking in some fridges around some of these places. That I, I Not student one accommodation, because you guys are awesome, but if I said to my apprentices, have a look around your fridges at home, I'd have all sorts of things in this risotto, and that would not be cool. So, getting back to this, in the pan now, we've got lovely mushrooms, garlic, onions, chicken, and bacon. I'll let you catch up a little bit, all right, so that we don't rush through too much. Now let's talk about the rice that you're going to use. Um, some of you might be Italian watching. Hello, bonjour. Uh, some of you might be French, so bonjour to you. Some of you may already know how to make a risotto from your homeland, or if you're Spanish, you know, Buenos Aires. Uh, you would have made paella probably at home with your family. So uh, you kind of know the rice already. But for those of you that are watching that haven't done this before, or haven't eaten or cooked Italian, this rice is known as aborio rice. So this is the packet that you see in the supermarkets, that's important, the blue bag, it's called arborio. It is a round, flat, polished Italian rice. You can't use jasmine here. You can't really do brown rice, you can't do it, you maybe can. Certainly don't use black rice. Uh, certainly don't use a short grain rice that would be used to make like a rice pudding or something. So and not basmati either, it's about the rice that you choose. So arborio is readily available in the supermarkets here. It is the best rice to use for this, I'm telling you. Really good. All right. I have a Spanish rice here called La Bomba Rice, not La Bomba. That's the song, right? It's called Bomba Rice. It is reasonably expensive. That's 10 bucks for that box. And that's wholesale. The Aborio is about $3. So I'm pretty sure I can guess what kind of rice you're going to use for your risotto. So we are going to use the Aborio today. And I've got a cup of rice here. Now, the cup of rice is not 250 grams. 250 mils, I know. Your recipe is in grams, but if you choose to use a cup recipe, you're going to use one cup of rice and three cups of liquid. Remember the ratio, one cup to three. One to three. Pretty easy. All right, that's going to go in here. And now, it sounds stupid, but we're actually going to, like, sweat the rice. <laughs> sounds silly. But the rice itself, which is in that pan now, I want that rice to like suck up all the flavours in that pan. So the butter and the chilli and the garlic and the bacon, all those lovely flavours, that rice is like a sponge. It's going to suck all that flavour into its core and then when we make this risotto we're going to have this extra flavour that's not just hanging around the rice, it's kind of like inside, it's delicious. So drop the temperature of the pan because you don't want to burn this. Alright, pop your rice in everybody. And again, let's check our pans, make sure they're not burning. You do not want this to be burnt, so I do suggest a non-stick pan for you. And notice I'm using my wooden spoon at this point. I am only going to use this wooden spoon until I add the liquid, and then I'm kind of going to show you the way I was taught to make it, which is to like flop the pan and move it and not keep stirring it, because in Italy they believe that the more you stir the rice, the more you're likely to smash the rice and they want the rice to be whole and cooked beautifully and treated with a bit of care. So, kind of like boys watching, it's like you treat your girlfriends or your mums and girls, same thing for us. So, it's like something that we are very, very reluctant to smash up and break. We want it to be beautiful for everybody. So, again, I'm going to let you guys catch up. Don't be frightened to move the pan around a little bit. And what you're looking for here, and uh, the best way to describe this is that the rice becomes a little bit, again, transparent. Uh, and basically, each rice grain has a little white dot in the centre of it. And the rice grain on the outside almost looks like it's dissolving away a little bit. That means you've got that outer, hard, starchy exterior to kind of like open up and absorb some of the flavours. What you don't want is the rice to burn at this point, all right? If you could smell this, I'm telling you, you would love it because the smell is just uh, outrageous. Um, again, if you're going to make this into a vegetarian dish, you're going to swap out the stock, which is chicken for this, to vegetable stock. And I would suggest you put some herbs in here, like some, uh, maybe some thyme, maybe some oregano or marjoram. Get some flavour happening in there. Because, you know, with mushrooms alone, uh, it's hard to get any increase in flavour, but you can. You can start to think about using dry herbs 
or some fresh herbs, but not like basil or dill or coriander. It's, it's not right. Marjoram or oregano or possibly chopped rosemary leaves, not twigs, and some thyme leaves. Fabulous. So, looking at that rice, I'm sure um, if you could see that close up, um, it's got like um, an outside edge that looks like see-through. It's got a little white dot in the centre of each of those grains. And that means that it's ready for you to add some liquid to it. It's crying out for it. Now, the liquid that I'm going to add to this is going to be chicken stock and white wine. And the first time I made this with Gennaro, he used a Prosecco, like an Italian champagne. Um, and he put the champagne in it, frothed up. It was beautiful. You don't need to spend money like that. You can just get a uh, reasonable white wine. Now, I'm sure some of you will have some wine in your fridges in the student wine accommodation, right? Possibly. And some of our apprentices watching, I know that they're going to have some sort of wine. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can just use stock. If you've got a bottle, I've got a little bit of, uh, this is local wine, Ballander, or local. This is from Stanthorpe, so it's Queensland wine. I'm going to pop a little bit in my pan. So what I'll do is deglaze all the flavours from the bottom of the pan. That means to lift off the flavour and add some wine to this, which is going to taste delicious. So again, following your quantities in your recipe. Remember, I mean, I was following my quantity right there. I <laughs> didn't use the recipe at all. Sorry about that. Um, Remember, one cup of rice to three cups of liquid, and in that three cups of liquid, some of that's wine. So measure it, all right? The next step for this is really important, is to reduce the wine away. You could say to me, well, Alison, why are you putting it in the first place? If you're gonna get rid of it, why put it in? The reason is because the wine reduction takes away all that, like, really harsh, acidic edge. Not that this beautiful wine doesn't have that, but if you were using a cheap wine, it's going to cook away all that ex sort of like alcohol and the acid. You're going to end up with this beautiful, sweet, reduced part of the wine, which is the grape, and it is absolutely delicious. We do this a lot in French cooking, by the way. All right. I'll give you to catch up again, because I know some of you may not be going as quick as this, so I'll leave you to catch up a little bit. Okay, so how do you know when the wine has reduced? Well, basically it's disappeared. It's no longer there. And if you're really not sure, grab a little bit of rice. It's not cooked, but you can taste it. And if it's still a little bit acid on your mouth, on your, on your palate, I should say, then the rice needs a little bit more cooking. Um, the wine needs a bit cooking, sorry. And this will also show you that the pan is, at the moment, almost dry. Almost. I know it's time to add my stock. All right. So, I have chicken stock. One cup of rice, three cups of this, or two and a half of this and half a cup of wine, if you want to make it a little special. All right. Make sure it's white wine, not red, because then you end up with pink risotto. Looks pretty dumb. Probably tastes nice, but white is best for this one. Okay, your chicken stock or your veggie stock, if you're making a vegetarian option, needs to be hot. So, when you add this to this, it's the same temperature. Kind of almost boil it first and then leave it. Now, if I was doing this with my apprentices at my high school, I'd have a pan next to me on a stove and I'd be ladling this in. But from safety, if you've got a, a jug at home or if you've made up some instant stock, which is perfectly okay, perfect. Just don't make it too salty, too strong. Have it in a jug, it's really easy to pour that in to your risotto. Now, the best risottos are made with time and care. If you pour all that in, I mean, obviously this is not three cups, I've got a big jug here. If you pour it all in together, kind of like misses the point. It's like a risotto needs to be cared for. So you're going to add a little bit at a time and then you're going to start to move around the rice and allow it just to gently absorb that first amount of stock. Right, so you do that next, you put your stock in, okay? Just a little bit. I'd say probably like maybe a quarter of the stock that you've got measured out, okay? Just a quarter. Done that? All right. We're going to add the next bit. And again, the rice is this time in charge. I know we said the pan was in charge, but the rice is going to tell us what it needs. If you taste this rice and it's rock hard and there's no liquid, it's telling you it needs more to drink. Add some more stock, a little bit at a time. And again, don't go mad because adding stock 
slowly to risotto enables the rice to be um, shiny, glossy, and it kind of starts to encourage the starch to come out a little bit. And that naturally then creates this beautiful, creamy, stew-like consistency. So if you add all the liquid at once, it's just like boiling rice. And you're going to get just like rice and liquid. With this, you're going to get this beautiful, creamy, cared for, stew-like main course, which is absolutely delicious. And it's got this lovely creaminess about it. And that is because you're allowing the rice to almost like stew down every time and be gentle and cared for. And it's going to love it. It's going to love you and you're going to love it. So maybe it's time for you to put your next stock in. Another thing I was taught is to build the flavour of the risotto as it's cooking. So if you're just catching up with your next a lot of uh, stock, what I'm going to do is add a little bit of ground pepper to this. And there is a method in my madness, and that is that if you add seasoning throughout cooking a risotto, it's more likely to absorb that flavour. And you know what? You use less because you're not putting this salt and pepper in at the end of the dish where it just kind of sits on top. This is developing through the whole process, which is really important. So, let me just have a little, little taste. If you're making it with bacon and you've used a smoky bacon or a speck, be careful of your salt, okay? But I've just used some lean rashes of bacon, lightly smoked, and I can do a little bit of salt, but again, build the flavor up. Don't be frightened to taste it. If you don't want to crunch through raw rice like I just did, not particularly nice, taste the liquid. Liquid's a really good indicator of what's happening in the pan. You can probably see that I'm not using my spoon here. I would like you to use a spoon if you're not confident of flopping the rice around. I don't want anyone burning themselves. Use a spoon. I'll go back to this because I've just realised that people are going to be like copying me and possibly burning themselves, which is not what I want. So we're going to use a spoon for this instance just to make sure that we're keeping everybody safe. And you might be using a saucepan and, and you can't do that. But it's, I guess I just wanted to show you, I guess I just wanted to show off, I can actually flop rice around in a pan, but I don't want you to hurt yourselves, all right? So, next lot of stock going in, we've added our flavour, you guys can add your next lot of stock, and if you are using the old-fashioned method, use a ladle at a time. So use an old, probably a 50ml ladle, and just ladle that in very carefully. So on your stove, you have a pan of stock on low with a ladle, and you've got your pan of rice. But remember, the, the handle of the ladle can get hot if that's on the boil, so I would turn that off. So I don't want you burning yourselves. Okay, now how do you know when this is ready? You can't answer me, I've just realised that. So how are you getting on? I'm hoping that your risotto's kind of like starting to look a little bit more like mine. And Matt popped over and took a photograph so that we can show you what the image should look like, because I'm aware that you might not be able to see in the pan. It should be almost ready, like mine, and they say between 12 and 15 minutes to cook a really good risotto. That, that's not the whole cooking, that's just when you're adding the liquid and the rice, okay? So you get your spoons, don't want anyone flopping rice around and hurting themselves. Um, I've added the last little bit of stock there. Now, how do you know when the rice is ready? Well, taste it, probably the best thing. If it's crunchy, it's not done. What you need, though, is a little bit of al dente. And the Italians watching probably think that's terrible pronunciation. It means with the bite, with the tooth, it means you kind of need to mm, chew the rice a little bit. Not crunch it, but chew it. It has to have some texture. We don't want it just to be all like uh, mushy and flat in our mouth. We want it to have a little bit of, uh, little bit of life, you know? Um, so a little bit of work with the teeth. That's what that means, al dente. All right. <coughs> All right, remember what I said about seasoning? A little bit of pepper going in here. Notice my red pepper mill matches my plate. It's really good. Ice is blue, you can see ice, Institute of Culinary Excellence. We thought we'd put a little splash of red in. Matt thought it might brighten everybody up a little bit. Hopefully that looks nice. I nicked this from home, so my husband's gonna be looking for this tonight, by the way. All right, a little bit of salt going in there as well. All right, so back to the pan. Hopefully you've got this beautiful stew, sloppy, shiny, glossy rice concoction that we're about to finish off. And the finishing is, is uh, superb and it's easy and it's the make or break of your risotto. So just give it a nice little, I'm showing off again, sorry. I'm doing a little bit of a 
a flop over with this lovely creamy stew-like rice. You're going to stir it carefully, which we've been through before. All right, now how do you know it's ready? Al dente means a little bit of bite, a little bit of effort. Gorgeous. So lovely. Oh, um, sorry, meanwhile, just dreaming about how lovely that is. I don't want it crunchy, you don't want it chalky. So let's go with what you feel, all right? But you want to make sure you've got a little bit of extra liquid in here, and I'll show you why. Because we're going to pop our spinach in away from the heat, and we want a little bit of extra liquid there because we're going to add cheese, Parmesan cheese, and if you want to be naughty, a little tiny extra knob of butter, just to add a few more calories to this. Um, and that cheese and butter and that extra stock is going to make that lovely sauce liquid. It's going to, we call it liaise, in other words, blend together. And it's going to hang there and it's going to be like this amazing sauce. So turn off the heat, which is important. I might keep it down on one because Matt will turn me off because this will start beeping and making stupid noises like it does. Hopefully you haven't set off the alarms at the accommodation. Is that, is that good? We're all right? We're all good? No alarm's gone off? Great, I'm assuming the answer's no, so if not, I'll be getting a phone call. Um, we're going to finish this off. All right, so we've got some baby spinach. Now, I'm adding the spinach for two reasons. One is, or three actually. One is to add some nutrients to this otherwise quite starchy meal. It's beautiful, but it's a little starchy. Adding this green iron and extra vitamins like vitamins uh, B and C going in here and adding a little bit of extra calcium as well and also a little bit of texture and colour. Colour, all right? A couple of handfuls, or just put one handful in, one and, one and a bit handfuls in. And what we're going to do is we're going to just use a spoon just to make sure that wilts down in the temperature of the rice only, all right? And at the same time, we're going to add a little bit of cheese. Now, you can grate fresh parmesan in here if you wish, or you can even use some pecorino if you like. Oh, beautiful, sheep's milk pecorino. I went to Pienza in Italy where I think the first pecorino was made, I'm not sure, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's the Pope's summer home, and the whole village smells of the cheese, it's amazing. Actually, you know, some of it is pretty, pretty strong. Pecorino is beautiful, so pecorino or a uh, parmesan or a reggiano, any of those lovely hard aged Italian cheeses, pop that in here, it's away from the heat now, you're just gonna stir it through, and I'm gonna add knob of butter, don't tell Matt because he's not here at the moment, but it's quite fattening. Put a little bit of knob of butter in there and that will give me this beautiful, shiny, glossy risotto. And if you do feel like you need to pop a little bit in of liquid, that's important too. This is a world-class risotto, all right, remember. So we're going to do this for uh, our guests. Um, if it is for you, then leave the butter out because if you're worried about, you know, calories and, and weight and being a little unhealthy because we're kind of all in isolation at the moment, I get that. But what you're looking for is this beautiful stew-like, a little bit sloppy, I don't want it solid. If you can stand a spoon up in it, we're doing something wrong here. So I don't want you to be able to do that. I don't want it just all liquid and a bit of rice floating. I want it to be like this amazing, juicy, creamy rice that's gonna go basically with a lovely little rocket salad on the side, which is gonna, again, add to the colour, the texture, the interest, the nutrients, the freshness, all those things, this plate is going to be all five food groups in one go. Watch, it's going to be great. All right, so, my rocket is here. I'm going to have a handful of beautiful, springy, gorgeous rocket leaves. Look at those, I love them. I hate them when you get them and they're all like floppy and dead. It's like, oh, really? If you want to keep them fresh, Keep them in the plastic bag from the supermarket anyway, but if you want to, pop them in a bowl and get some wet paper towel, kitchen towel, wring it out, pop it over the top and place that in the fridge. That's going to keep that nice and crunchy. And if all else fails, put it in a sink of water and watch it come back to life. That's a good tip for herbs as well, by the way. All right, so let's just do one final taste. Oh, amazing. All right. Now, in your recipe, I say to serve this with um, a rocket side salad. We cut a little bit of lemon. Now, don't go cutting the lemon in half. We do this slightly differently. We cut cheek to cheek. There's a song, Dance Together Cheek to Cheek. Think about that when you're cutting the lemon. All right, and then cut that centrepiece in half. The reason being is you get this whole cheek of lemon without pips, without the centre section, and you can hold your hand over it and squeeze so much juice. Look at that. 
all over that rocket. Now, don't do that until the end, all right? So you've got this finished. Do this last. If you want to hold back on this one because your mates are not here or you're not quite ready, don't do all the finishing thing. Don't do all the cheese and the spinach and the butter. Do that at the end. Bring it back to the temperature. Put a little bit more stock in and then you finish it just before you're going to eat it, okay? That's important. Now, a little bit... I'm going to use some pink salt. So a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in here. So really good quality olive oil. Olive oil really was, I guess, supposed to be eaten and not cooked with. So basically, I think you should choose some really good olive oil if you can. Don't use vegetable oil for this. And I snuck this out from home as well. This is truffle oil. It's very expensive. Steve doesn't know I've bought it in, but I wanted you to have a little... Uh, well, you won't be able to taste it. I'm going to taste this with Matt. So we're going to have this beautiful, earthy truffle oil with our risottos tonight. But... What you can do, and which I will show you, is you use a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on the top of your risotto. I'll be using my hands at this point at home, by the way, but because you're watching, I'm not doing that, so I can keep my hands in my, keep my hands out the way. Alrighty, so um, we're going to serve this risotto. So I'll just wait for you to catch up. You can make your salads. So a little bit of lemon juice, a splash of olive oil, a pinch of sea salt, and if you want a bit of pepper up to you, it's your dinner, so you can put whatever you want in it. And in this salad, you could even put like some thinly sliced radishes, maybe some very thinly sliced uh, fennel, maybe, maybe some dill, maybe some half baby tomatoes, uh, Spanish onion, anything you like really. But remember the, the flavors of this salad need to complement the risotto. So this lovely risotto now is ready to serve. Okay, I've got this beautiful red plate. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you a tip um, one of the things we show when we're doing uh, training is how to get it onto the plate without spilling too much. Do you know, it's so much easier to get it on the plate right in the first place than it is to try and wipe the plate. So let's get a lovely plate, and a white plate's fine. You know, it's up to you, whatever you've got. Don't go out buying special stuff. It's much nicer on a plate than a bowl, and I'll show you why. So use a plate underneath. This is a really good trick. This is free. Use this as your drip plate. And it's always going to drip on the way back to the pan, believe me. It's Murphy's Law. Again, you're going to leave this here, again, back here, and you're going to serve this up on the plate, just like I have. And I've probably only made half the recipe here in this pan tonight. You'll have probably twice that if you're going to serve four people. All right. So now, what you should be able to do with that risotto is shake the plate, and that risotto should move across the plate. If it doesn't, it means it's really, really stodgy. You should be able to move that on the plate. And I've got a little bit of chicken there, so I'll just, I'll just help, help a little bit with another little section just there. All right, again, just I was taught just to bang down the plate and make sure it's just all beautiful and flowy. Uh, shaved parmesan's going on top. So if you've got that on your plate now, it should be looking pretty nice. So a little bit of truffle oil. It's going to be gorgeous. All right, if I can get the thing open, it would be gorgeous. Put your finger over the top so that you are only allowing a few drips. And that is super strong in flavour, so we don't want to put too much on. If you are using just normal uh, virgin oil, often they come with a little uh, pourer, like a drizzler, and you can do that yourself. A little bit on the top. Olive oil is nature's gift to us. It was supposed to be eaten raw and not really cooked with. All right, next up, last but not least... If you've all caught up with me, sorry if I'm going too fast, but you can pause me, you know that. You're going to put a little bit of dress rocket on the top, and basically that's going to add a little bit of life, a bit of freshness, a little bit of colour, and again, some nutrients, because as students studying, it's really important that your physical and mental well-being is up there at its peak, so that you can study better, excel, do better, feel better, and eat better. So we've got this beautiful chicken, bacon and mushroom risotto. We've got a lovely rocket salad just sitting on the top of it. And I think that when you taste this, and I can't taste yours, so I'm just going to assume this. When you taste it, you're going, oh my God, that's delicious. Second time you make it, you might change a few things, add a few little quirks, make it your own. Uh, you might choose not to do the wine. You might choose to make it vegetarian. You know, it's up to you. But as long as it looks something like this, I'm really, really happy. So that is our risotto, made especially for you, from my school to your home and your apartment. So hopefully you enjoy that tonight. 
So thanks everyone for joining us in our ice kitchens. It's been an absolute pleasure cooking for you tonight in your homes, in your apartments. Uh, thanks to the amazing people at Student One Accommodation for asking me to do this. I think this is a fabulous idea and a great opportunity for you to see what we do. Hopefully it's given you some inspiration to do some beautiful cooking in your apartments. And uh, I'm hoping that one of you wants to come to school and, and train with us here. So for one night only, sound like John Farnham and George Benson and all those people that have said they're doing one more performance only, one night only, we're offering 50% off our student fees for one person. We're going to offer a scholarship tonight through Student One Accommodation. So if you're really, really interested in continuing studying in Brisbane and you're not ready to go home yet, you can't go home anyway, right? Because you're stuck with us. But if you want to study with us, we're offering 50% off our student fees. Now, to qualify for this, and if you're really keen, I'd love to have you here. We love students, we love food, and we love teaching. So if you want to be part of that, you need to send us a photograph or a video of you cooking this dish, show us a picture of the finished dish or all your friends enjoying this dish and send it in to Student One Accommodation and we will pick out our winner and then we're going to talk to you about offering you 50% off of our scholarship fees, off our student fees, sorry. It's going to be a Student One Accommodation scholarship. It's a really great opportunity to spread the word, get you guys excited about ice and cooking and uh, we would love to have you at our school. So thanks so much for watching. From our kitchens to yours, thanks so much. Have a great night. Enjoy the risotto and hope to see you at my school soon. Good night.